I call Jamie Lee Ross. Mr Speaker, I'm pleased to be following that member so that I can remind the House that that is the member who has led the Labour Party opposition to the position of opposing trade, opposing future export opportunities for New Zealanders. He's the man that's led the opposition towards a position which is completely divorced to what any Labour government <coughs> has ever um, held as a position previously in terms of trade. And so, Mr Speaker, for anyone that was listening to David Clark talking uh, in the House about trade and about exports and about growing the economy, don't listen to a word he said. Don't listen to anything that he's had to say about growing the economy or growing exports or go growing trade, because we know that they are the gov they are the opposition, they are the party that <laughs> no longer soon. supports trade, they no longer support the export sector in our country, they no longer support um, people in New Zealand who are trying to get ahead by wanting to export more goods and services overseas. And Mr Speaker, David Clark is one of the um, architects of the Labour Party's new opposition to trade and opposition to the Labour Party supporting um, New Zealand businesses. They don't support them anymore. They don't support the workers in this country anymore. And the proud tradition that they have held previously is no longer one with credibility. Mr Speaker, this government is one with credibility. This government is one that <coughs> is achieving good things for New Zealanders. It's a government which is balancing the books. It's a government that has uh, led New Zealand through some difficult times and some difficult periods. And Mr Speaker, we're now seeing the fruits of um, New Zealanders' hard work and we're now seeing um, the results of a country that's been prepared to um, go and work hard through the tough times, um, supported by the government, and now we're seeing better opportunities for New Zealanders. We're seeing higher wages for New Zealanders. We're seeing more jobs created in this economy under a national-led government, led by John Key, ably assisted by our Minister of Finance, Bill English. And, Mr Speaker, we're seeing more achieved for New Zealanders and greater outcomes for New Zealanders. Mr Speaker, the appropriations in the budget that we're talking about today is all about um, turning our economy more towards um, the next steps and future opportunities for New Zealand. When we talk about the likes of um, the education system, we can talk about the additional investment that our ministers and our government are putting into education infrastructure. When we talk about the health system, we can't believe the numbers that the Labour Party has talked about in terms of funding. Funding for health has gone up every single year. And, Mr Speaker, it's not just about additional money going into the budget, it's about getting better outcomes for New Zealanders as well. We can also point to the fact that New Zealanders are voting with their feet. We're not seeing the thousands, the tens of thousands of people leaving the country as we did when Labour was last in office and when Labour had the opportunity to govern the country, where tens of a whole rugby stadium full of people were leaving the country every single year, Mr Speaker. That has turned about around. That is reversed. And, Mr Speaker, New Zealanders are voting with their feet. We don't have to listen to what they want to say in the parliament, Mr Speaker. They are voting with their feet and they are deciding for themselves where they want to see their future opportunities for New Zealand. Under the Labour Party, the future opportunities for New Zealanders is in Australia. Under the National Party, the future opportunities for New Zealanders are in New Zealand. Mr Speaker, they are coming back to New Zealand in their droves. They are coming back here because they see future opportunities for their children, they see future opportunities for their families, they see we're creating more jobs in this economy, they see that wages are going up in this economy, they see that the education system is leading to more children getting NCA Level 2, they're seeing that the underinvestment in education is being reversed, they're seeing that their children and their families will have more access to elective surgeries under a national-led government, they're seeing that their children have greater access to immunisation under this national-led government, and they see that there are future opportunities for New Zealanders as well. I also want to point to the fact that the cities and the regions in this country are doing very well as, as well. Mr Speaker, yes, we have some housing difficulties in Auckland that we're working through. Yes, Mr Speaker, there are challenges on the horizon. But let's just point out that much of the challenge that we have in Auckland is a challenge 
based on the results of success for New Zealand. We are dealing with these challenges because we have been successful as a country. We're dealing with high migration in Auckland because people are choosing to move back to New Zealand. We're dealing with housing issues in Auckland because people are, are choosing to move to this country and they're choosing to live here. Mr Speaker, we do have a comprehensive plan of action for housing in Auckland. We do have a lot of work underway to deliver more supply. But I say to the Labour Party, and I say to those opposite who have been attacking the government throughout speeches on this debate, if they really care about housing in Auckland, if they really care about the first home buyers in Auckland, come on board. Get on board the plan to open up um, Auckland, open up land for more supply. Come on board and support RMA reform for New Zealand. Come on board and support getting more people into skills and into the workforce in the construction industry. And get on board to the fact that the answer to housing in Auckland is not for the government to try and build houses, it's for the government and for the parliament to create an environment so that New Zealanders living in Auckland that want to build, that want to have land available to build on, have the opportunity to do that. I want to say something that isn't said very often uh, in this parliament or even in Auckland, and that's congratulations to the Auckland Council. I want to say congratulations to the Auckland Council for the leadership they've shown on the unitary plan recently. Because, Mr Speaker, whatever the question is around housing in Auckland or anywhere else in New Zealand, whatever the question is and whatever you want to solve in the housing space, it all comes back to one answer, and that's delivering more supply. And so, Mr Speaker, whether it's through the unitary plan that delivers more supply, whether it's through the housing accords that we've had in place that will deliver more supply, whether it's uh, the infrastructure fund that we're putting aside for councils to work with us on, that will deliver more supply. And, Mr Speaker, that is the way to get better housing opportunities for New Zealanders uh, living in Auckland. I also want to say to Nick Smith, uh, congratulations to him on the Home Start scheme. Now, Mr Speaker, there are thousands of people, thousands of first home buyers across New Zealand who will have greater access to buy their first home through that Home Start scheme set up by this government led by Nick Smith. I know my colleague uh, Sarah Dowie and, and uh, Todd Barclay and others from the regions far divorced from Auckland, uh, they are also seeing their communities benefit from the Home Start scheme, where people can use their own savings uh, through the KiwiSaver scheme to get access to uh, funds to be able to purchase their first home. And Mr Speaker, we are seeing the numbers slowly uh, ramp up on that particular scheme, and about 90,000 people will have access to their first home under that scheme. And Mr Speaker, I think that's a brilliant thing. Combine that with the fact that New Zealanders are seeing their wages growing. Combine that with the fact that we have delivered uh, tens of thousands of jobs in the past year and the years before that. Combine that with the fact that we're going to see uh, another 170,000 jobs uh, created in this economy by 2020. Combine that with the fact that we're seeing uh, more funding going into skills training. Combine that with the fact uh, that we're seeing a healthier workforce. Combine that with the fact that we're going to see future trading opportunities that the Labour Party opposes, but we're supporting under TPP. And, Mr Speaker, we're seeing a New Zealand uh, that now has a balanced budget. We're seeing a New Zealand that now has better opportunities for children in the future. We are now seeing a New Zealand that is willing to invest up front in the early years of a child's life so that they get better outcomes in their later years. We're seeing a government that is now mature enough to say these are the areas in which we need to invest in early on so that we can uh, both save money for the taxpayer in the future, but more importantly, get better outcomes in people's lives. These are the factors in which uh, we can invest in so that there are uh, less, uh, connect less connection with corrections, uh, so that there are less opportunity for people to fall through the cracks, so that there are more children that are able to succeed and achieve in their life. And Mr Speaker, that is a good thing for New Zealand. Eight years of success, Mr Clark. Eight years of success that we have been able to lead a government uh, with John Key and Bill English at the helm, where we have delivered a good, stable government that has invested in the important areas of New Zealand, balanced the budget and delivered a better New Zealand for future opportunities, for future generations. And, Mr Speaker, I wholeheartedly endorse the budget delivered by Bill English. Well Members, this debate has concluded. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it.
Party votes called for. We'll ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 32 votes opposed. Green Party. Uh, 12 votes opposed. New Zealand First. 12 opposed. Māori Party. Two in favour. Act New Zealand. One in favour. United Future. One in favour. Members, the ayes are 63, the noes are 56. The motion is agreed to. Appropriation 2016-17 Estimates Bill, third reading. Impress Supply, second for 2016-17 Bill, second reading. The Impress Supply, second for 2016-17 Bill, is set down for third reading forthwith. The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, I move that the impressed supply second for 2016-17 bill be now read a third time. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Impressed supply second for 2016-17 bill, third reading. Call on Government Order of the Day number three. Interrupted debate on the first reading of the Food Safety Law Reform Bill.